You are listening to Chew by Birmingham Live. Hello, welcome back to the Current Blue podcast. My name is Dan Rowlands and I'm joined by our Villa reporter, Ashley Priest from Selhurst Park Car Park. Ash, how are you, mate? You okay? Sainsbury's Car Park in uh, South London. It's, it's teaming down, so... <laughs> Why is it always raining on Villa after that? Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, rubbish. Mate, but uh, yeah, I, I just want to clarify to the audience. I feel like this podcast might be a little bit all over the place, just because it's such a weird game. The first forty-five, not that we were brilliant, but it was you know we were pretty good, and I was good value. almost almost getting myself ready to come on here and say a pretty comfortable win against Palace. Done the double over them, played them twice, and they've been pretty poor in in both games. I even did a few notes the first half at uh, McGinn's uh, Captain McGinn, good finish, Grealish back for X amount of minutes. What, what will we see later on? We can talk about the impact he might have. Watkins coming back, him back into the side, and that changes Villa's dynamic. He presses from the front, and at half time we capitulate and. I stopped taking notes thinking, well, I can't really be bothered. It's such a weird game because we, yeah. again, we've said it millions of times, masters of, our, uh, masters of our own downfall. We always do something silly. And second half, we're oh, not good enough. Not good enough in that second half at all. Yeah, it sums up the season, Dan. Have I lost you? Have you yeah. gone? No, still no, I'm there. still here. Yeah, it sums up the season for me. And just Villa looking so good and getting fans excited. This is good. This is really good. Um, McGinn's goal was fantastic. Al, Al Ghazi putting Villa back here. Everyone's getting excited again, and then just, just little bits creep in that now. And Pally's come on strong, and Villa can't kick the ball for Toffee. And it's a it's a defeat, and Villa slipping up again when they when they go ahead. I don't know how many times have the blue an advantage now this season. It's becoming a, yeah. a, a common common occurrence. But but yeah, just the story of the season for me. Looking so good in the first half and second half of the season, it's been pretty pretty bleak, but. Just show, Villa have shown the glimpses, obviously. I thought the first half was fantastic today. and oh, I think I've got loads of stick for my player ratings, but I'm juggling that thing that many things on a match day. <laughs> um, I apologise for them. But listen, yeah, um, blew it in the end and Palace were deserved winners. But they've just polled it on Villa at the end. And For me, I thought they missed Tyra and Minzy's leadership skills. I, I thought mm. they was all over the shop at the back at times. Courtney Horsch asking a lot for him to come in. First game since December and he's come in. I mean, my now, you're gonna you're gonna be rusty, aren't you? So, so yeah, I've just, I've just seen D Smith. I've seen, just waved to me. He's in the car with Johan Langer, so hopefully they're, they're on the blower to someone over the summer and get, getting the deals done. But yeah, it's evident to see Villa need to bolster next season if they want to make up that gap. So, so yeah, um, can't be too despondent. Okay, it's frustrating to losing that manner, but season's peaking out as it is. I don't think we're gonna get top half now either, which is hmm. pretty uh, unthinkable given given the start we had. So, yeah. Quick turnaround now to, to Spurs, but disappointing afternoon here. Yeah, disappointing, frustration, annoying, all these different words you could use to describe it. We talked a lot and we're late to the podcast this afternoon. Matt's been busy, James's been busy. So we've had to, you've done so much on a match day. We're now asking you to do a 20 minute podcast as well, which is a lot later than usual. So I've, I've seen a bit of the social media fallout. I've seen other podcasts chatting this afternoon. And I can't really put my finger on the, the fans' feeling, really, because it's 50, well, not 50%, but some people seem to think, yeah, well, you know, we've hit the ceiling for this season. We're going to finish somewhere 11th, 12th, something like that. And that's progress. Last year, survived on the last day. And I, I think I fall into that side. I'm still pretty content overall. Villa have improved on last season. They've got a transfer window to prove that they can improve, improve again next season. And then that's when I'll start to judge it a little bit more critically. On the other hand, some people see, see it as, well, we started so well. We've proved Villa are good enough. We've pl- proved we've got the players. We've proved that we're tactical and we can make the right decisions. So why now can't we? Why since 2021 have we been so poor? And they start to think, maybe we can look elsewhere. Maybe we can change this, change that and improve. And and, and that's the angle they go down. I agree that the second half of the season hasn't been good enough. But I'm not in the part of the, the camp that says we need major changes to the, the management, the players, to to improve next season. I think we've got a transfer window to sign three or four quality players in the positions that we're crying out for, for 100 million, 150 million, go big on a few players. And then next season, that's when you start to judge, I think. Yeah, I think, I think you nailed it there, to be, uh, to be fair. It's just a strength in depth, isn't it? Courtney Horse coming into that. Yeah, the squad's not big enough. The squad's not, the squad's not big enough, um, like you say. And Al Ghazi and Tro- I know Al Ghazi scored today, Bertrand Shorai. They've been playing a lot of games. Without having the competition, really. Grealish has been out, hasn't he? Trezor guy's out long term. So that they know they're going to start. So that they haven't really got anyone breathing down the neck. What else as well? Um, same with Ollie Watkins, but I think Watkins is okay today. It's McGinn and Douglas Louise, it's, it's the same pair every week, near enough. They haven't got mm-hmm. no one, no one 
no one competing with them, have they, to be honest? So, so yeah, I think the strength in depth need, needs to be bolstered considerably next season. So, listen, we're not calling for panic stations here. There's only two games left. It's it's petered out as it is. Um, but it all points to a big summer. I've said this work for weeks now. It points to a yeah. big summer because the, the fans' expectations there, the owner's expectation, the words are getting banded around, Champions League, this, European, European, that. Um, it's going to happen, isn't it? Whenever, whenever, you, whenever, whenever we're going to lose a game, it's going to, it's going to start. Questions are going to be asked. So, for question not to be asked next season, the team needs to be better. So, so yeah, um, that's it. I'm just, I've just spoken to Dean Smith, and he's one, one of frustration because he was really lovely on in the first half. He was telling them, "Love that bird, so great stuff." And Villa, Villa were good, were good value, wasn't they? And for it to just, just end like that, and Palace come on really strong at the end, and. Just yeah, couldn't get out, could they? So, so yeah, interesting one, interesting one to ponder now. And I think it'll be a summer of change, Dan. I don't know what the, the fans are saying on the comments, but I think it'll be a summer of change. Will we'll refresh it again, and we'll see where we go from there. There's as always, when as you say with the Villa defeat, there's always going to be a bit of. It's, I feel like it's in the heat at the moment. There's a lot of Dean Smith out comments, which we've had before. We've had for weeks when when we have a defeat. Again, I'm not in. I'm not in that camp. I don't think that's the point of. of of this 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 season, I think we should still be pretty grateful for the the um, transformation that we've had since last season. So far, the evidence suggests that with Dean Smith and this the owners and these squad, this group of players, they improve every season. They get promoted, they've consolidated, they've survived, consolidated. Next season, if we don't improve, yeah, then start start asking questions. Maybe that's time for change. We've had three or four years at this Villa project. It looks like it's not working out. You get to Christmas next season. That's when you start to to ask questions. If we have a bad start next season. Going to finish 11th or 12th. I don't think you sacked the manager for that when you finished 17th last season. Um, yes, the second half hasn't been second half of the season hasn't been great, but I don't think you sacked the manager. But I know everyone's entitled to their, their opinion, and that's fine. People saying you, you know uh, Smith's taken us as far as we can go and all that kind of thing. I think for this season that's correct. I think this season we've hit a ceiling of mid table. I don't think we can get any further than mid table because the squad isn't good enough for that. It's too inconsistent. We've got. I'm not going to say world class because I don't. I don't mean world class as in Real Madrid or Barcelona, but for where we are, Grealish in that little camp, Martinez, yep. and who else really is, is good enough to be in in the elite level for the Premier League? No one else really. There's some good players in there: Cash, Mings, Douglas Luiz, and even Begin on their day are good Premier League players. Watkins as well. Beyond that, though. They're okay Premier League players. Some of them are, are good. Some of them are okay. But it's inconsistency. That's the problem. Villa, Villa are like a winger. They're like a, one of our own wingers. He's had yeah, some yeah. Villa. Sometimes amazing, brilliant. El Ghazi scores 10 goals this season. Yeah, great. And other times, we'll have a shot from the edge of the air, go out for a throw-in. And it's like, yeah. that's, that's Aston Villa. We can be either sublime or, or awful from one game to the next. So I think this season, Villa have hit their ceiling. This was as good as it was going to get. The European dream was a was a character to aim for, but realistically, we, we don't have the depth to get there. If this time next season we're saying, "Oh, fifteenth, we, we're going to finish," and you know that's backwards from last year, that's when maybe you make the changes to, to management and, and, and a, a, an overhaul of the squad. I think this summer you spend in key areas and make that squad better. That uh, a push for Europe can can happen. We spoke before about you know top six and all that. You look at Leicester, they won the league in 2016. It's only yesterday they've gone, up, gone on to win an FA Cup. It's been years of building for Leicester to be up and around that top four, top six, for them to consistently be able to do it. Villa got promoted two seasons ago. They've, they stayed up on the last day. They'll finish mid-table. What were we expecting? I know people say, oh, well, Leeds will, will come up and finish above us on their first season. Sheffield United did that last year. Sheffield United bottom this year. So what? You've got to have stable, steady progress, I think, and that's what Villa have gotten. And next season is is what will be judged on properly. Because I think if if things go as pl- as planned, we've spoke before about Villa haven't really made a bad transfer really since the new owners have been here. If they make, if they get this summer window correct and sign the right players and the positions that they, we clearly need, we need a big midfielder. <clears throat> we need more quality out wide. We maybe need another striker, another defender potentially. If you saw all that. Maybe that's next season for the one that we push for Europe and this year is mid tables as good as we can get. That was a massive ramble. I don't know whether any of that made sense. <laughs> no, it does, yeah, to be fair. Um just searching that for consistency. Supporters like you, me, Dan and everyone else, you want it all now, don't you? You've seen you've seen the flashes of brilliance yeah, of throughout this season. You want it you, you, why aren't they doing it that week in, week out? And 
they did it for 45 minutes today and they couldn't see out the game. So it's been a story of the second half of the season for Villa. So, so yeah, I mean, Grealish needs to come back, doesn't he? He needs to, he needs to have an injury-free season next season. And yeah. then I think we'll be up there. I said this last week. If Grealish didn't get injured, I think Villa will be up there with US Nams and whatnot. So, but we need, we need players to play with him. We need, we need that calibre of player to come in. I think we need a, a potent goal scorer. Because, I mean, for all of Watkins' runs and his hard work... I mean, he had a couple of chances today, but they're straight at the keeper. I think we need a, a real marksman in there to score mm. the goals. When, when you're not on top, you got half a chance. It's you're ahead. So, so yeah, plenty, plenty of plenty to talk about. It's gonna be a big summer, like I said. I'm just seeing Johan Langer on the phone in Sellers Park, so I think he's gonna be busy this summer. And it all points to that. Cushion Perslow was here today as well. So yeah, big summer needed, Dan. I don't know what the sports are saying on the comments, but it all points to big summer. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep watch your space. Realistically, you need to spend another what, two hundred, three hundred million, four hundred million to be to become a top six club. It's not going to happen overnight, is it? We spent a hundred million odd last year on three or four quality players: Martinez, Cash, Watkins, a couple that I named earlier. And they've made an improvement. This squad and Villa are better for that. If they do the same again next season and push on from twelfth to eighth again, that's a season of progress, and we should be happy with with that steady uh, increase, shouldn't we? Yeah, I mean, look at the Leicester City model. It's a good model to follow. I mean, obviously, Villa, Villa poached. Um, they've got Rob McKenzie in there. who had a big success through at Leicester, plucking gems. Yeah. The logs of Kante, Mare. So, Rob McKenzie's on board as well at Villa. He's head of recruitment here. So, he has a big side behind the scenes. He'll be working with Johan Langer, who, who, who himself knows a player or two. So, they're working a lot with data and, and, and analytics kind of thing. So, there will be the odd bargain in there, I think. I don't think they're going to go gun co, £50 million pound here, £50 million pound there. I think they're going to be quite clever about it and astute. And they'll look at the Euro 2020s as well. Any gems flying around there. So, so mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm, I envisage as many six, seven coming in, you know, because the, the squad needs replenishing. Tyler, Almo, Horahan, they're all going to go. Heaton looks like he's going to go. Um, yeah. So, they'll be adding to that. So, I think we'll, what was it, we signed five players last the season just going now. So, I think there'll be more, more signings to come. And yeah, it's a big one. I can't stress that enough. Um, but Villa, beyond the scenes at Villa, there's a lot of emphasis into recruitment. So that that that, that tells you everything what what they do this summer. So yeah, I mean, I'd like to see I mean, the youngsters. Everyone, everyone witnessed them on when was that now Friday night? Yeah. Kind of took a week. I thought he'd get some minutes today. That didn't happen. But I think we'll see him at Spurs or or Chelsea at least. So Louis Barry's coming through the ranks as well. So they've got the youngsters are coming through. Whether they'll blood them in, we'll, we'll see that over pre season. But yeah, um, I don't know what's what's the general feeling on, on on this pod, mate. I mean, it's a tough one to take. I mean, I will ponder it on the drive home, but it's, it's two games left. It's fans back in next week as well. That's mm. a positive, surely. They can see yeah. see it with their own eyes. Yeah, I hope that the fans that do get to uh, you know lucky enough to be there next week, in, you know, enjoy the day and, and make the most of it because. And it's not this kind of weird negative atmosphere that we're getting on social media in the in the last few weeks. You know, if you're lucky enough to be at Villa Park next week, get behind the boys and, and enjoy it. Um, there's a stat that I saw on Twitter before we started. I think it came from Opta. Uh, it's Aston Villa have dropped 19 points from winning positions in 2021, the joint most of any side in England's top four tiers. They hadn't dropped a single point from a winning position this season before the turn of the year. How do we go from... Wow. If we go ahead, we won before Christmas. This uh, the second half of the season, losing 19 points and winning positions is a is a big big amount. Um, I said on on Twitter earlier that um, the moment that Sky mentioned that Crystal Palace had you know it's been 100 years or whatever it was since they've um, since half time they've been losing they've never won the game in the second half. As soon as I mentioned that, I, I don't know what the record was. It was something like 30 odd games. As soon as I mentioned that, I thought oh, that's it. Then they're they're going to beat us today. Whenever there's a bad record, Villa break it. Yeah, so Smith was quite uptight about this. He was, he was he was mentioned about this in his press conference just now. Um, keep blowing leads. Why is that? He said, "This time we play Liverpool, Man U, Man City, all in there." So he tried he tried to play that down. Same we're playing against one of the best teams in the division when when they capitulated. So yeah, I don't know what to make of that. I, I mentioned to Smith. I said he missed Tyrone today. His leadership skills, body on the line mentality, and he kind of agreed. And he said Courtney Horse struggled for, to play. Hasn't played enough games. Um, mm. Struggle of fitness at the end. So it's one of them, isn't it? Really. I mean, you go a, go a goal ahead against Man City nine times out of ten, they're going to come back, aren't they? But yeah. today was equal, today was disappointing, though the manner of it. Um, fans get over the line. So what do you point that down to? 
Smith played that down, given the opposition up against. But I think it's that ruthless streak. I've, I've, I've mentioned it. Like you have, you have half a chance. Al Ghazi decision making in the final third of the pitch. Whereas you got Jack Grealish coming on. If he starts the game, he makes the he makes the the right decision all, all, all the time. So missed his creativity today to, to to muster up chances in the second half. So. So yeah, I think they need to score more goals than, 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 than what they're doing. I mean, they scored two today, but they pegged back and def- defensively they weren't good enough. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what you put it down to. I think it's easy to say that Grealish missed twelve games. That's obviously going to affect everybody. We had the COVID break as well, which is you know COVID saved us last season and it's probably put the brakes on this season. I don't know. I just don't think there's, 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 if I can get my words out, I don't think there's enough of a backup plan. I don't think the squad's big enough. I don't think that's Dean Smith's fault. I don't think it's a lack of tactics. I don't think it's a lack of a plan B or, or whatever you want to call it. There's only so much you can do in a transfer window. And I, d- I just don't think we've got enough options past that first team that that we trust. What, what, what are you going to do to change the game today? Bring on Ross Barkley, who's, who's been rubbish for the best half of the best part of the second half of the yeah. season anyway. That's not going to change the game, is it? Nakamba gets in in dribs and drabs and to fair, has looked all right in, in parts this season, but is that, is that going to hold on to the game? I just don't think the squad's there and and, and hopefully next season it is. That's the only thing that we... I think we've just got to wait. We've got to wait out the, this season, fizzling out, because we're not, not going to make it to Europe. We're not going to go down. I'd like to see us be a bit more on the front foot and be a bit more entertaining because at times it's been boring watching us this second half of the season and football's there to be, to be you know, for entertainment. I think we're just going to wait till next season and be patient and hope that they get the summer business right to, to kick on again next season. And that's that's all we can do. There's two games left now. Let's just get them out of the way and end the season. Yeah, I think probably Villa will become a bit predictable to play against. Mm. Like Grealish especially. They're going to click the channel up to Watkins. McGinn's, McGinn's going to look to get on the second ball and, and probably stop that from happening in the second half today. It was interesting, Smith said, uh, just before Mitchell scored at the end, he said we wanted to get a Davis on. We were going to go four four two with four with four five minutes to go at two two. So that he did want to chase chase for a winner, but is that, is that too late? Will we, will we see two up top from the start of next season? I doubt that because Smith mentioned as much last week, saying he prefers a, a three man midfield in the Premier League because that's where the ball's controlled. So yeah. yeah, interesting one to look at it really um, regarding systems and, and stuff like that. But yeah, it's been a bit predictable this season. Um, with Watkins running tirelessly and just Villa, Villa looking for bits off it, so interesting. Yeah, I don't know what to make of it really. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens on Wednesday. We'll, we'll, we'll change it. Be, be a foot. I think Mings comes back back in. Cash's season's out now, so I mean, will we'll, Kai Kessler get a run out of right back to check him out? Don't know. Um, probably, probably, probably Almo again, but <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Well, uh, we'll wrap this up with one final question because your connection's a little bit dodgy down in South London. Obviously, you want to get home at some point as well. If you could only sign one player this summer, and obviously we're not going to just sign one player, what position would it be? Who is the who's the biggest problem we need to fix? It's I'm just torn between a winner and a number ten to be honest. Um... I've seen I thought Eze was good today for Palace and Zaha that they come to the fore when they needed to so someone someone like that who can step it up when needed to be because Torre and Algarzi don't really do that enough for me so someone of, in the same league as your Grealish someone really can rely on apart from Grealish so just a, 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 I'd say a winger with real pedigree a goal scoring winger um, who hopefully can Villa, Villa can, can get to just help the likes of Watkins and stuff. So, I don't think a striker is of desperate need. I know Tammy Abraham was missing from Chelsea's lineup yesterday again. Whether that one will be explored, 40 million quid. I don't know what fans are saying about that. He's a goal machine, isn't he? Um, mm. Because you put Watkins on, on, the, on the flank, that's an option. I think that Villa will look at that. But I think, yeah, I'm torn between a winger and a number 10. To, to, just to give the potent threat in the yeah your connection uh, is definitely yeah. dipping out so we'll, we'll end it there in, in a second I'm surprised you said Start winger or number 10 I, my, my, I'd go for a, a big midfielder I think I was watching Leicester yesterday and 
two different styles of player, either indeed he's someone there who's going to sit there and mop everything up, break down the player and pass it on and, and be an absolute brute in there. Yeah. Um, or somebody like Tielemans who can do a bit of everything yeah. and be, you know, you don't, you don't want to be have a, have a player that's, you know, okay at everything, but Tielemans is, is, is so good. Uh, obviously, not specifically sign him because that's not going to happen, but that kind of player that can do a bit of everything and, and be one of the three who's you can rely on to mop up with little bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, we'll call it a day there because uh, the connection's a little bit ropey. Thanks to everyone who tuned in um, on this Sunday afternoon. I want to go and enjoy the rest of my day while I can because no one enjoys talking about um, Villa losing to Crystal Palace. So we'll wrap it up there. We'll be get back again on Wednesday. I'm going to get out of here before I can find it. <laughs> end what I wanted to try and say. Christ, I can't even get my words out. So let's call it down. I'm going to press the end button and leave. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue and Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please Cheers. do let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode. But until then, up the villa. Up the villa.